Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, um, I joined a little read along uh, that Ryland at Reading with Ryland uh, hosted, and um, it was for all of these books. So, I was going to do a vlog for like each book and then like talk about it after um yeah yeah i just read the first book and then realized i forgot to pick up the camera <laughs> as i do a lot so i figured i just like write down my <laughs> feelings my thoughts and all that and um go through them like this might as well might as well so in the series we have uh, Red Queen, Glass Sword, King's Cage, and War Storm. Uh, that was a very terrible way to hold it up. I've read all of those before. Uh, I have also Cruel Crown, which has two uh, prequel novellas. It has two novellas. Um, but I didn't read that this time. Instead, I got this one, which has the two novellas from this book. So basically, this book is pointless. Uh, <laughs> uh, it also has uh, four more. How many, how many does it have? It has a bunch of short stories. We'll get to that later. So um most of this i hadn't read before so that's brand new to me so i figure i'd just go through a bit of a summarization of what the book is or is about and then like my thoughts on it i figure that's that's as good as any so let's start with red queen so this is a world divided by blood red and silver the reds they are commoners. They are ruled by silver elite in possession of the mighty powers or godlike superpowers as they would like to think. And we follow Mare Barrow and she is a 17 year old girl who is a red girl from the poverty stricken stilts. And it seems like nothing will ever change. This is until she finds herself working in the Silver Palace, surrounded by the people she hates most. Mare discovers that, mm, despite her red blood, she possesses a deadly power of her own. One that threatens to destroy the balance of power. So, fearful of Mare's hidden powers, the Silvers, they hide her in plain sight, declaring her a long-lost Silver Princess, now engaged to a Silver Prince. Despite knowing that one misstep would mean her death, she works silently with the Scarlet Guard to bring down the Silver Regime. But this is a world of betrayal and lies. Mare has entered a dangerous dance. Reds against Silvers, Prince against Prince, Mare against her own heart. <laughs> I should not do like dramatic acting because I'm terrible. Anyway, so the first time around I read this book, I really enjoyed it. It was something that I hadn't read before. It was very new in like every sense of the word. And the fact that like this tiny book packed such an impact, amazing, amazing. So since first reading this book, I have read um, a lot more books. <laughs> um surprise uh, uh but i still i still really enjoy this book i know there's so many people that like hate this book and i'm like mm, no it's fine i still really enjoy this book yeah it gave it gave me what i came for i don't know what that was but it, enjoyment chaos entertainment all the words so, yes. 
Um, what's the next one? Glass sword is the next one. So, if there's one thing that Mad Barrow knows, it's that she's different. Mad Barrow's blood is a red, the colour of the common folk. But her silver ability, the power to control lightning, yeah, has turned her into a weapon that the royal court uh, is trying to control. The crown calls her an impossibility, a fake. But as she makes her escape from the prince and friend who betrayed her, Mare uncovers something startling. She is not the only one of her kind. Pursued by a now vindictive king, Mare sets out to recruit other red and silver fighters to join the struggle of their oppressors. But Mare finds herself at a deadly path at a risk of becoming the monster she is trying to defeat. <clears throat> Will she shatter at the lives that are the cost of the rebellion or have treachery and betrayal harden her forever? So I, <laughs> I kind of like how the blurb makes it sound uh, like Mare is just doing this all, <laughs> all on her own. Um, she's really not. <laughs> she's not doing it. So basically, instead of being controlled by the crown, she kind of finds herself being controlled by the Scarlet Guard. Ooh. <laughs> there's always someone. There, there's always going to be someone that's going to be like taking advantage of who you are. Um, and I guess that kind of proves it for Mares at least. She is however very much trying to like guide them, the Scarlet Guard that is, guide them into finding all these other new bloods, the the red-blooded people with uh, the silver abilities, the new bloods. Well to warn them and to give them a choice basically they can choose to join them and fight against the Silvers or they can run and hide as best they can and I mean the the chance of survival is like 50-50 at that point so choose well, choose well. But yeah, uh, in the end uh, Mare has a very hard choice to make and to like save her friends and her family she kind of sacrifices herself, um, lets herself be taken really. Um, yeah, I'm trying really hard not to like spoil everything like just with the blurbs and um, my nose is very itchy and with like my thoughts on the books. Um, I'm trying really hard, okay? Okay. Uh, so the book number three is King's Cage. So allegiances are tested on every side. When the lightning girl spark is gone, who will light the way for the rebellion? Mare Barrow is a prisoner. She is powerless without her lightning, tormented by her lethal mistakes. She lives at the mercy of the boy she once loved. As Mare bears the weight of silent stone in the castle, her once ragtag band of new bloods <laughs> Uh, and Reds continue organizing training and expanding. Um, they prepare for war, no longer able to linger in the shadows. And the exiled prince, with his own claim on Mare's heart, will stop at nothing to bring her back. When blood turns on blood, Ability on ability, there may be no one left to put out the fire, leaving Norta as Mare knows to burn all the way down. So, <laughs> this is the book where my interest for this story as a whole kind of fades. Um, it starts to wave <laughs> a lot. The story is starting to get really, really slow and just drawn out and I'm wondering if there's really a destination in mind. For the last novel in the book, we do have the short story novella left as well, but 
the last novel, the end of the line. Uh, Warstorm, victory comes at a price. Mayor Barrow, now determined to protect her heart and secure freedom for Reds and New Bloods like herself, Mayor resolves to overthrow the Kingdom of Norta once and for all. But no battle is won alone. <laughs> <laughs> and before the Reds may rise as one, Mare must side with the boy who broke her heart in order to defeat the boy who almost broke her. War is coming and all that Mare has fought for hangs in the balance. Will victory be enough to topple the Silver Kingdoms? Or will the little lightning girl be forever silenced? So this is the last book and I'm just at a loss. <laughs> so this one we just mostly go back and forth between uh, backstabbing and nothing really, um, nothing much else really happens. <laughs> it's basically just one backstabbing session after the other and uh, then it ends. It's a very anticlimactic end, which also makes me want to ask if it's really an ending. Yeah. Um, so for my coin, I probably would have liked for book three and four to be shortened and put together. The very last one, Broken Throne. So in this one, we have a bunch of short stories. Um, two of which I'd already read, like I said in the beginning. So some of them are from before Red Queen starts and some of them are from like the middle of it and the ending, mostly. So nothing much really happens. Uh, it's not like we need this short story collection to actually uh, understand more of the series because we get all the little explanations of what happens in this in the books. However, um, there are some short stories uh, which kind of, uh, let's say, ends. Um, it's the it's that what happens after the end for some some of the characters and that was actually kind of satisfying because we actually get sort of an ending instead of just the end. Also this contains, uh, let's see if I can find it, so it contains a lot of like um, middle history and like family trees and we have some maps as well somewhere. maps um so it has a lot of like extra bonus things none that actually is necessary it's just for fun it's just for fun as a whole the series i do like it um it's not my favorite and i don't think it's one i want to reread a bunch of times i may reread it again in the future it's been a couple of years since i read uh, read them the first time around. Uh, I did, I think I read, I think I kind of read them just after they came out. I believe. Don't quote me on that because I don't remember. But so I kind of reread them now because Rylan was going to have a, will host a read along and I was like, yes, let's do it. It was also an excuse for me to buy this book and add that to my little collection of books. Um, so that's a thing. I did, however, only update about Red Queen and then I totally forgot to update about the rest of the books. Um, cause I did get behind a bit and then, yeah. So here's a video. <laughs> Anyway, um, if you haven't already, go check out Rylan's channel and follow her because she does have a lot of um, read-alongs and read-a-thons and stuff. She has one now in October, um, the spooky, something spooky, Spooktober, Spooktober? Is that the one? I don't know. Um, but yeah. And anyway, thank you Rylan for hosting and uh, thank you everyone for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye -bye.